Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teaches Noob. Today I'm returning once again, Bianca. Hi! And today's going to be a short one as we go over a not so great um, parody called Power Packager. This one had a very long gestation period of creating. Um, hold on a sec. Uh, I mean, and you I, don't uh, mean pregnancy. No, no, no. I mean, we'll see pregnant elephants in this, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hold on a second. So, and so, yeah, this was meant to be a, um, Roger Stern had worked at Now, Adam Blostein, before, this was before I, um, he had a, um, um, a, a, a sec, you know, a transitioned and everything, but this was the same person who would be the voice of Meowth from Pokemon. Wait, transition? Yep, they were trans. <laughs> The who was it? Um, the artist here. Uh, the well, artist. Who wanted to be Maddie Blasting? Well, huh. actually, and, and Milestone, but yeah, it's best known for being the voice of me. Yes, that's right. That's such a weird thing. So, so just you know, the artist they voiced me out from Pokemon. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, I mean, this was a very multi talented person who, unfortunately, um. Um, passed away in 2008. <gasps> no! Yep. And they were actually the first intersex transgender voice artists for many of our respective agencies. Wow. Respect Blasting. Mm hmm. Did they still pick it? They, they still have that last name, Blasting? Yeah, Blasting. They still kept the last name. They oh, okay, cool. Adam to Maddie. But also, eh, that said, is an okay uh, name. <laughs> yeah, they also, and they also worked for Milestone Comics. And, oh, really? and, uh, so, yeah, they actually worked on a bunch of issues of Static, Hardware, and Deathwish, and, yeah, Deathwish and Icon. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, they were the artists on this book. But we open up with, um, like, we just see a whole bunch of pregnant elephants in the back cart of, and um, cart of a train a circus train and right as they disconnect and start heading on we see this guy who's basically a um bruce banner xp is running on out and we see ivan this horrible um spy guy how can you tell he's um spy a uh, spy because he keeps on changing it the side his monocles on <laughs> and yeah they go on while well, he's distracting a bunch of guys with cards he activates the bomb and the um, nuclear test the gamma bomb and this one guy ends up getting fried and the elephants are far enough away that they just get partially irradiated but when they do get birth they end up getting birth some more humanoid looking um elephants Ooh. all right you can see the, how dumb this is right yeah, ain't starting out strong, honestly. But yeah, you have Electrolux, uh, Mammoth, who can actually, um, it's the Colossus one, Trunklops, Cyclops, and Rumbo. That's the um, Wolverine one. And um, uh, you said a mouthful, bub. Of course we didn't hit the big time overnight, eh? There was lots of hard knocks along the way. Until eventually um, Mammoth headed for the Orient to find true enlightenment. The only thing that got enlightened was his pockets. Um, <laughs> Electrolux lived with a Greek family for a while. <laughs> um, tri and Trunklops wound up in an orphanage like nobody wanted him. Me, I drifted north. Finally ended up in the roughest sleeves drive this side of the, Antar the Arctic Circle. My kind of place. Until he got clocked out and then woke up with, well, metal tusks. <laughs> It was pretty clear that somebody had given me a pair of, cl uh, of Class A blades. Why? Beats me. Maybe I've been using some experiment. Maybe the writer just wanted to put a little mystery in my life. Me? I didn't care. I just wanted to get on with the story. Dang, breaking the fourth wall and everything. Yep, and they soon climb on up the mountain until he, he, he makes up with Electrolux and, uh, and turns out to find these four masters, and it's the uh, Stooges. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they added uh, Larry, two, Curly, two Moe, chefs. Shemp. Yeah, yeah, Larry, no, Larry, Curly, Moe, and Shemp. 
Oh, that's right. Curly and Shep. I totally forgot. That's my bad. I'm a fake fan. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. So, yeah, they started to train them. Yeah, not much trading going on. And then they decided to head on out until um, they meet up with um, Mammoth. And like, where does pants go? Probably the same place my tusks go. <laughs> yep, he turns into South Steel and then he meets up with um, Trunk Clops, who's being all the brooding one. Yo, Sno- Snotty, leave me alone, Rumbo. Nice to see you. Remember me, and you, to see you remember me after all these years. How come you've got that rock stuffed up your snout? It's a ruby quartz plug. The only thing that will contain my nose beam. Get it, nose beam. <laughs> and then he has him see um, Electrolux, and he falls in love with her. <laughs> wow, of course, it's exactly and like then, the Cyclops. And, and then they get their secret headquarters, and um, interesting. I'm kind of digging it. That's pretty smart. And to play off the joke about Chris Claremont always has a train session, they include a train session for no other problem, reason. Including they deal with the um the mops from Fantasia. I'm surprised they got away with that. <laughs> yep, they start fi- um, fi- uh, dealing with a bunch of them and... Um, yeah, obviously, Trunk Clap is falling very hard for our Electrolux. Um, until eventually meets, he meets up with her, like, Electrolux, are you, are you in? Oop, what is it, Trunk Clops? Can we uh, talk? What's the matter? Did something I say upset you? It isn't you, Ellie. It's me. I'm very attracted to you, but for all the wrong reasons. You see, I was in love with another. But one night while watching Wild Kingdom, she got a peanut cut in her throat. I tried to Heimlich maneuver, but it was too late. Here's her picture. I thought I'd never find another soul, another like her, until I saw you. Oh, yes. See, you look just like her. I don't believe it. She does look like me. Wait a minute. This isn't a picture. It's a pocket mirror. <laughs> okay, that was funny, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a that minute. Was, that was legitimately funny. <laughs> oh, he interrupted her shower just for that. <laughs> Yeah, but come on, let's be honest. That is a joke. It was like, it's a pocket mirror. Oh, and she died of a peanut allergy. <laughs> no, 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 just down, down her, got, got caught in her throat. I told you that she has a liking for mammoth. I would say, uh, mammoth, what would you say if I told you I love you? I would say you should take a cold shower. If we, if we are on a mission, there could be no room for romance. What? You don't mean that. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant, hey! <laughs> <laughs> so they're sent off to deal with um, Magenta and, Ma- and Magneta's Conservatory of Music. Wow. So yeah, like Magneto, only he is a, a clarinetto, former <laughs> head of the Brotherhood of Evil Musicians. Oh, and unlike the, in this case, he's actually a, uh, well, a Nazi worshiper. What? Being the opposite of uh, Magneto. Yeah. <laughs> and it leads to a big fight and everything. And they, um, yeah, you can already see where all this is going. Oh, and good. It's the new musicians as opposed to the new mutants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, puts up. I mean, okay, the action is kind of decent, weird, but decent. Oh, the feet. I can't. I know, for elect- uh, Electrolux. Until she falls into radio... Electrolux falls into late radioactive makeup and soon becomes uh, the rogue elephant. Wow. And she starts singing, I am sunshine, I am shadow, I am darkness, I am light, I am good times, I am bad times, I am daytime, I am night. Yes, now and forever. Wait for it. I am Rogue Elephant. Ba 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 boom. Takes out all the bad guys, and now they have to try and um stop and stop her. She lets out a big screech that starts damaging so much stuff, and apparently there's ET. <laughs> and then unfortunately, then um she feels like she has to bl- and, bl- and that uh, and Trunk Clops has to blast her. Mammoth tickles him so his nose so he can sneeze and blast her, knocking off all the makeup. 
So she's back to normal again. And but they, but they soon realize this uh, this could have killed a guy that's killed. So they go up there, beat up the four masters, and they take over. Is it obvious? We take over their racket. I'll drink to that. The power pachyderms are lo- no more. Long live the new perfect master. Surprise? What do you expect us to do? Uh, and to go around risking our lives month after month? No way. This ain't the Avengers, you, kn- you know? This is a parody, a spoof, a takeoff. So take off. Stupid, wasn't it? I hate it so much. It was... Oh, I'm sorry, Stanley, but no. <laughs> I know it's just beyond stupid, wasn't it? It's it's so obnoxious. Like nobody is likable. Not even the Wolverine's uh parody character. Actually, you know what? I did like Mammoth. He was actually chill. Mm-hmm. But he didn't do much anyway. So. Um. But um. So yeah. To be figured, uh, I mean, at least brute force, even if it wasn't a parody, it was still better. Yeah, like it was at least fun. It was, it was entertaining. Oh. So, yeah, this is a nice short one. Hey, you'll get me up to 100 faster at this rate. <laughs> so, we'll see you on the next one as we go over Howard the Duck. Woo! Yeah, but this one. It's done by the art with the artwork by the guy who was one of the two artists for Dan Slott's She Hulk run. Oh, you'll know which one when we get to it. But we'll see you all on the next one. Take Bye. Care.